the binary jazz, the leaf pile in the sky. I am Chris, jazz sequence on the internet. I'm with Gary, who's binary Gary on the internet, and Allison, that's Allison Plus on the internet. And we are a podcast about things. Uh, that is that is the thing. That's what you're here for. We're in your pods casting. Um, and uh yeah, typically the way that this goes is uh, Allison brings us a topic and we talk about the thing. Gary and I don't know what the topic is and we try to make shit up until uh, it makes sense and usually get sidetracked and talk about other shit. Um, I was going to say two things. One, Allison, dig in the glasses. Um, for those of you that are listening to an audio podcast, Allison's wearing glasses today. Um, secondly, in the States, it's Thanksgiving, which is a semi-major holiday. Not today. I, not today. But this when we're week, recording this, it was before Thanksgiving. When this is going to be released, it'll be after Thanksgiving. Assuming yet to give thanks. <laughs> yeah, we are we're pretty thankful. Um the uh there's like a frenetic energy, I think, around holidays, and I am very hopeful that I can harness some of that in a useful way today, and it's not just mayhem. Although, as it's been going thus far, it's just been mayhem. Starting with like great donuts this morning. So I'm actually, believe it or not, I'm actually working today. I didn't take the day off. So all this has happened and I'm still calling it a work day so far. <laughs> <laughs> what episode are we on? That one. Well, I am not officially giving thanks this week, but I will. You thanks gave already, right? Yeah, I already gave thanks, and um, it's tangled. You can't give thanks too much. <laughs> yeah, there's only so much thanks to give. <laughs> yeah, there's only so much thanks to give, and uh, it gets repetitive after a while. <laughs> I mean, I think that's legit because um, the uh, the general state of the world has not been, you know, rad. I normally, I do normally actually have two Thanksgivings because I love Thanksgiving mm. food. Um, but this year I did not get my act together. Uh, but, you know, the week is still young. Maybe, maybe there's still a grocery trip in my future for some sweet potato casserole and pecan pie. I don't know. Who's to say? Who's to say? <laughs> I, it, what so what what's the side that you're um you're always most excited about is it is it sweet potato casserole um sweet potato casserole or uh yorkshire pudding mm. i'm pretty excited about i'm uh i'm cliche uh and and i love the green bean casserole so Morning. None of those are things that are that are in mushroom my soup Thanksgiving yeah. repertoire. I don't think we're actually doing it this year, so we'll do um, broccoli casserole. We'll do some roasted vegetables. We'll do um, oh risotto, asparagus risotto. I'm pretty excited about that, actually. That is exciting. Yeah, that does sound a, pretty good. Not not a traditional um, Thanksgiving dish, but you don't know. <laughs> You're right. You're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. You're right. Uh, I don't know. Pies? How do you feel about pie? I mean, I love pie. I'm very particular about my pie, though, which means I have to make it myself normally. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I think um, pumpkin is overrated. I'm with the greens. I, uh, pumpkin is not the one I reach for. No, pecan is mine. Or pecan. I'll, I mean... I'll, eat, I'll eat pumpkin pie, but... Um, it wouldn't be my first choice. Yeah. I told my mom this and she said it was a revelation. And I was just like, well, surely you know that like noticed at holidays, I usually just eat the pecan pie. And she was just like, but I had pumpkin pie there too. And I was just like, yeah, but <laughs> I think it's a texture thing. I'm pumpkin I pie out at this point, but I, I was only never had spice. Like I don't, I was never, uh, I never, really had the pumpkin pie i didn't i think i did i think it was the texture thing that 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 put me off i didn't have pumpkin pie until like i was an adult i was like oh this is actually 
this pie that I've never had as a child is actually pretty good, <laughs> but it's not, it's not my favorite. I, I always go toward like berry pies more than, than that you, sort of like creamy. Yeah. Whatever. Where, where are we on rhubarb? <sighs> Love rhubarb. Yeah. Okay. All right. I Strawberry used to rhubarb think... pie was like a, a institution oh. as I was a kid. Oh, I used to think, um, my grandpa growing up would always say rhubarb pie was his favorite, but um, yeah. we just never had any rhubarb. And so I thought it was like a made up thing um, <laughs> that he, cause this was like very classic, my grandpa, like making up weird words and like just going with it. Um, and so I thought rhubarb was just like this fake, fake pie that he pretended to like until I got to a restaurant at some point. I was like, it's real. <laughs> I better, I better, uh, I better try it. Yeah, I know. I have to try it now. Uh, my mother-in-law has a gigantic rhubarb bush that when we lived closer, she would always give me a bunch of rhubarb, which was great. Bush? I don't know what it is. It's kind of like it's gigantic. They take over, apparently. If you're, anyone's ever interested in growing rhubarb, it's a, it's a feat. I've never consumed rhubarb. Oh, it's um. I think it's best paired with like a berry to like, kind of. Uh, I don't know, dull the sharpness. <laughs> I don't know how to. <laughs> yeah, I don't know I I've mean, had one many many my, years. My Maybe stepmom find one. was always into rhubarb pies, and I that was like the first time I had ever learned of the existence of a thing called rhubarb. It was a similar sort of thing, like this seems like a made up thing. And then I learned that it was like a vegetable that you're pairing with a pie. I'm like, what? I did, this doesn't make any sense. This is not, this is, does not compute. Does not compute. Hey, you know what bums me out about pumpkins? Um, I'm going to tell you. The inside doesn't match the outside color. Like how cool would it be if you had a green pumpkin and you like cut it open and it was green inside instead of like orange fleshy mm. or white, you know? Or but like, like what, that marbling. what vegetable matches? What? Bell peppers. Yeah, cut bell open peppers. a bell pepper and the inside of the bell pepper looks like the outside of the oh, bell pepper. Okay. Yeah. How hysterical would that be if you cut open a green bell pepper, the inside's like yellow or orange? You're like, or like, wait a minute. I like when you cut them open and then there's another little bell pepper. <laughs> oh. It, fe- it really feels like winning like the lottery, doesn't it? <laughs> I like uh I like the the carrots that are multicolored. The carrots <laughs> that you cut them open and you're like, oh, it's a purple carrot, but surprise, the inside is yellow. You all are um, culinary folks, so perhaps you sure. can answer this question. Um, beans, dry beans. If you're making a soup with dry beans, I read that you should soak them overnight yes, or at least eight hours before cooking with them because it cuts down on flatulence. <laughs> yeah. Um, but normally we don't do that. Normally we just make the bean soup. But yesterday, mm-hmm. I, so well, I didn't, it wasn't yesterday. I started, I don't know, whenever we ate it for dinner last night, so I soaked it the night before and then got it in the crock pot early in the morning. Um, I don't think it made any difference. Is that, is like, is there actually like science to back this up that you're aware of or? It's definitely a thing that you do. science to back it up, but I think depending on the type of bean, it really yeah. matters. Oh, I, well, I had 15 bean soup. So the chances are pretty good um, that, <laughs> that one you, of those 15. You checked off all the beans. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that one of them is, is, is had, yeah. But maybe one of them was worse. Wow, the leaves are, like, it's so funny. Just like leaf blowing this pile closer to the road and more leaves are like, oh, sweet. Look at that empty spot of grass. Let's fall there. It's just, this time of year is magical. Magical. It's cold. This time of year is cold. Golly, my feet are so cold right now. <laughs> I've been running around in those leaves and like, I'm only wearing my Vans and one pair of socks and regretting that decision. Only one my, pair. My fingers are cold. Do you that's wear more than that's... one pair of socks at a time? I mean, when it's cold, yeah, I'll, I'll wear two pairs of socks. Absolutely. Why don't you just get better socks? outside that well well uh thermodynamics or something um i wear like a thin pair and then put like a thick pair over top of them oh. and that seems to insulate better than just wearing the thick pair by itself i'll do that like when i go out for like a walk when it's like 30 and i'm gonna be out for like 90 minutes mm-hmm. then i'll wear like you know if i'm just like walking from my house to the car i can just live with thick socks but if i intend to be in it for a while when it's freezing or below i'll double sock it 
And that brings us to today's topic. <laughs> Double socks. Double socks. Oh, I know this one. <laughs> uh, today's topic is Glaucus. What? Glaucus. G L A U C O U S. G L? Yeah. Well, C U. What? C U S? G L A U. A U. C O U S. Glaucus. C O U S. It's the root word for glaucoma, obviously. obviously. So this has to do with eyeballs, hardening of eyeballs specifically. Hardening of things, maybe. Maybe not just eyeballs. Maybe no, it's like I the wanna, shell. No, I'm just going to veto this line. <laughs> just no. <laughs> Why? Because we're talking about eyeballs. Is that is that like a gross topic? It's a thing. It's a trigger for 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 many individuals. We could we could probably talk about glaucoma without talking about eyeballs. Um, okay. Uh, I, yeah, hardening it's, it's, of, of of surfaces. Yeah, it's, 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 it's something 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 is very yeah yeah. <laughs> so like you know that your Dyson sphere is done when you've got a nice crust. Or it's got a glaucus around, around it. it. Well, yeah, are any of you making <laughs> Dyson spheres this Thanksgiving? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then and then if you let something harden too much, it becomes a piece of glaucite. Yeah, you gotta throw away at that point. There's nothing you can't you can't save yeah. it. Yeah. So. Do they sell that at metaphysical stores? Glaucite? Glaucite. Um yeah, I mean they might. What's the meaning for it? What does it help with? Uh flatulence. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a little a little round ball you put uh, it in your sort soup of, sort of white you're making your soup no, and it... you don't put it in your soup don't eat it it just set it there to help oh okay so it's like a stone soup sort of thing it absorbs the flatula it causes flatula. <laughs> uh how far do well, you think you could get with your kids and using that as an explanation before they're just like dad <laughs> Probably, I mean, I could, I could play it for a while, pretty far. My kids would probably let me go on for like two minutes. I might even at Before lunch when I had leftover eyes. soup, I might, uh, I might pitch it. Like I was doing some research this morning, and here's what I found, and they'd be like, "What, really? Yeah, we need to get <laughs> something to that has really thick blockage." Then you lose trust for future things, right? Like, I believe that ship has already set sail. Yeah, <laughs> everything I suggest is suspect. Even like the soaking the beans, they were like, that's not true. Like, well, I guess we're doing science. <laughs> we're, doing sci- we're doing science every day. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, was, some- I was thinking it was spelled differently in my head when you said it. I was thinking glaucus. Okay. G-L-O-K-U-S, which, you know, is the U.S. distributor of glocks the the firearm <laughs> glock us obviously or glock us yeah, yeah glock us yeah <laughs> that would be their website wouldn't it yeah, yeah. glock yeah. us yeah oh man <laughs> that i without looking i am reasonably confident that that exists yeah. it sells exactly what we think it sells for exactly who we think will buy it glock.us but i think it's O-C-K, the site does Chris. not exist O-C-K? okay block uh-huh. us oh it's loading something mm. put on a watch list now <laughs> <laughs> apparently their site sucks because it's taking a really long time to load Hold that on. seems about right <laughs> oh yep I went to a thing. Uh, hmm. We've been Tell on. A, we've been thing. on. We've been on break for a while. Uh, and in the it was interim, a sabbatical. Yeah. Yeah. And in the interim, oh, connections time dot cool. No Glock that US. Excellent. That's good. It's it's because of server demand. We crashed the server. Yeah, we crashed it. It. Three people on this on this uh, on this call that, that are looking for it. Uh, yeah. So we were on uh, a break, and uh, during during that break, uh, Aaron and I went to Las Vegas, to Valley of Fire. Uh, we went and saw the Michael Jackson Cirque du Soleil uh, oh. at Mandalay Bay, which is pretty cool. Um, better than I thought it would be. Um, I don't know what I expected, really. Um, 
but but it was pretty cool it had it had less it was more dancing and less uh less aerial acrobatic stuff but i guess that's to be expected because michael jackson um and uh we went to the meow wolf exhibit uh so there's so there's this place in in vegas now i don't know how long it's been there i don't think it's been there very long there's a big warehouse building thing called area 15 and it's an art installation it's like a mall for art basically this is what uh and so you get there it's this big black gray building um and there's like music and dancing outside and you go through and it looks like you're going into a club and they check your id and stuff and you go in and there's like like you know edm blaring and there's all these little like there's like a few shops and there's like museums and stuff there was a there was a a klimt uh museum there that we didn't go to there was some museum on like booze i think uh, but then a big wall, a big section of this building is taken up by uh, uh, the Meow Wolf thing. Meow Wolf is, I guess, an art collective or something that builds weird installations. Uh, and so the one that they have in Vegas is called Omega Mart. There's a Meow Wolf brewery in uh, New Mexico. I don't know if there's any correlation, but sorry. Don't know. No idea. Keep going. I was uh so as you go to the so we got tickets to to the meow wolf uh so you go in uh and you go into omega mart which is like this big like grocery store looking thing but it's all super like weird um but it's an actual like functioning like it's also their gift store um so like everything in there is actually stuff you can buy most of the things that are in there are things you can actually buy um and like they have actual products um like they like i i was already aware of of the water company called liquid death um so they have liquid death there and they had um they had cans of gender fluid uh which is pretty cool that's uh, love memorable. That. uh they had uh these pillows that were like bags of chips uh but they were pillows um they had all sorts of just random random weird stuff uh, a lot of it was stuff that they make uh and sell uh but some of it is stuff that they obviously pulled in from other places. And there's like a wall where it looks, you know, like, like when a, when a JPEG doesn't load all the way or there's, or like glitches midway through the download where you have like, you have yeah. the picture and then the streaky line straight down. And then the other half of the picture, well, they have like, they have like a wall where you're like looking at milk or something. And then like, you know, somewhere in the middle of, of, of the, the, the aisle it just like breaks and there's this like weird streaky thing so like you're seeing it in real life it's pretty cool uh so but then you go into the back um of this grocery store like there's all these like secret chambers you can go through there's like tunnels that you can go like there's like just like a tent set up you know how sometimes you go to a grocery store and they have this tent you can win this tent you go through the tent you can go th- out into the back area you can go through like the the meat department or you can go through some other like side doors and stuff and then you're in this the back area and then it's all like weirdly dystopian sci-fi stuff um uh more loud music uh some slides lots of like announcements about like so so the whole there's a whole story to this thing too like there's a whole like uh interactive storytelling experience thing wherein uh there is this uh this dude uh uh i think his last name is mart not omega um uh, <laughs> like like ken mart or something um and he was like had had created this this grocery chain uh and like you know was ceo of the company and then started expanding and then his daughter comes in and like and this is all stuff i learned from the website because because if you go to the the there's a there's a um uh, an Omni, t- I think it's like some like Omega Corp or something uh, or whatever. Mm-hmm. There's like some fake company behind it and you go there and you can learn all about their stuff. Uh, and um, so apparently like, so he's the dude and then there's his daughter comes in uh, and I'm spoiling it, uh, but like she like usurps him. Like he chose his, he chose his successor. He was going to retire and he chose his successor and she came in and she removed him from, from CEO position and she became CEO instead of his successor. And she's taking it all in this weird, like biotechnology stuff. So like, so like all the stuff in the back is all themed, like weird experiments on humans and stuff and like on human happiness and transcendence and stuff. Uh, and, and so it's all like, you're walking through like just weird experiment stuff. Uh, and it's pretty cool. Uh, Sounds really cool. It's really weird. Um, uh, 
yeah, it was it was a little bit like um, uh, the City Museum in St. Louis uh, that we went to mm. a few years ago. Uh, in that, it had a lot of like it was sort of like the same kind of approach to like an adult playground, um, but it was less. It was more like techie. It was like like. I guess the Las Vegas version of, of, of uh, city, city museum, museum with funding. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. City exactly. museum with funding and a capitalist capitalist uh, yes. potential for profit. Yep. Yes. Yep. Exactly. That's the thing. <laughs> right there. Capitalism is. I, it's I cool. think I want to. And it's, it's, it was ridiculous. It's stupidly. It's like 55 bucks a pop, uh, but it's worth it. It is really it is. It is cool. As we probably go back. I think I want to figure out, not this year, because I only have a couple of days to figure it out, but I think I want to figure out some way to engage in anti-capitalist practices between Thanksgiving and Christmas in 2022. I don't, don't know what buy that means. Stuff. Well, don't, I mean, that would be step one, but yeah. I'm certain that I could do more than that. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, I honestly, like not buying things uh, and finding some other way of, of celebrating the people that you love uh, in gift giving season is probably the biggest uh, step toward anti-capitalism that you could possibly make because that's the biggest time to buy things yeah yeah um yeah but everything There's, is capitalism there could be lots of little steps of what that looks like to you it depends on what portion you're most mad about yeah there's uh There's, um, but there's like small things like not, like, like not, not participating. Right. But then there's like larger things that are actually smaller in daily exercise, but compound more, you know, like, I mean, like, like, I, I, like a, a silly example, an easy, maybe not an easy example. I didn't do so well last year, um, would be like planting and growing my own vegetables. Right. Like, but there's probably something like that I could figure out like every day. What are what are what are the metaphorical ways to like you know grow your own vegetables that can get you off of the conveyor belt, as it were? I mean, it it like everything everything is capitalist, which makes it kind of hard. Like like even if you I say know. okay, like I value experiences over uh, over uh, things, possessions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you say, okay, so in, in pursuing the goal of valuing experiences over things, I'm going to go out and do things. Well, in order to go out and do things, you need to like, like, unless you're going to buy, which is still capitalist, an RV and live in your RV. When you go out and do things, you're still spending money mm -hmm. on, on wherever, the place that you're going, the food, the hotel accommodations or Airbnb or whatever. Like it's all, you know, it all plays into the system. There's no, like, I don't know, I guess I've given up. Because <laughs> unless we're gonna um, live in a commune uh and like yeah grow our own food and and like you know craft our own books with our bare hands and like uh or only ever buy used anything i guess maybe i guess i guess that's somewhat less capitalist than buying things new which i mean that's a probably a pretty good you know sustainable mm. practice in general but or like um, supporting smaller businesses rather than yeah like yeah i mean i think that i think that small. patreon and things like it are a pretty uh anti-capitalist model in that um you're you're oh, giving directly money to the creator directly to the creator yeah as opposed to like them having to work for an actual person maybe uh and that you're you were showing that you value their things and, and helping them to continue making the thing that they're making I know the dude that that makes all the the D and D models uh, that I that I you know patronize and download and use in my games. I don't. I think that he quit his job a few years ago because he's just got patrons that that pay him to do this, and that's awesome. Um, I, I was I was going to say uh, we 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 spoke uh, in our Slack about uh, the Christmas parade that just happened here in my mm -hmm. hometown, my current hometown. Um, which uh, uh, Chris uh, pointed out uh, a couple times uh, was <laughs> took twice. place uh, in uh, in November. Uh, in Christmas it is a Christmas parade. It's not a holiday parade in the city. It's very much a Christmas parade. And this Christmas parade took place um, 
uh, before Thanksgiving, uh, also in the month that Christmas doesn't even happen. Uh, in any case, um, all I mean, there were like there were like actual like legit floats pulled by you know pickup trucks that were you know very typical of the area, and um, there were um, there were so many that were sponsored by very very bizarre companies so it was like somebody knew somebody whose kid was in this dance troupe and they needed someone to help underwrite the expense of you know or maybe not expense maybe just needed someone who like hey if you if you tow this trailer with your truck like you can put your business sign up we'll put a sign so, on it yeah <laughs> yeah and this this i, I looked at the numbers so 40 percent of the population of the city shows up for this parade hmm. um and that is um like 20 percent uh, well, listen, like fifteen percent of the entire county is at this parade, so it's 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 a big deal. Now, granted, I'm in a small area, but still, like it's uh, and it goes on forever. We were there for two hours, and we left after two hours, and the parade is not going to be over anytime soon. Wow. Um, uh, but but every single one of those entries had some kind of small business associated with them, except for of course like the EMTs and the sheriff and the police department. And uh, they're in the parade. Of course, yes. There was there was a so last year, December twentieth or something. Um, the, the oh boy, let's get political. There was an officer that was uh, killed in line of duty uh, here in Concord, and um, uh, obviously, like that that draws out like you know uh, a fair bit of people. You know, the blue thin blue line, blah blah blah, whatever. Um, and uh, uh, you know, our ridiculously overfunded police department that shows up with a SWAT vehicle that is, you know, military surplus from Afghanistan. Like it, 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 the city's a population of hundred thousand. Like we, we don't need our own bomb squad. Mm. We don't need like, you know, this SWAT vehicle to bring in like armored humans to extract people from a potential. I don't, it's ridiculous. It's just absolutely asinine. It's especially considering we are 30 minutes outside of a major city that already has like, you know, all that stuff. bomb unit yeah. and oh yeah 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 so if we're there were a need for it we it's 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 baffling in any case um we all in the city back to police and so after this officer was killed uh city hall you could go and get a blue light bulb to put on your porch so you could light a blue light bulb in support of the police um which i think is fantastic because i can drive past houses and understand immediately <laughs> the mindset of the people that live there right um but also it's just so baffling so there was one float in the parade that was in honor of our fallen officer and like, you know, Christmas parade. And then like, what a fun downer, like, you know, this like summer float goes past and the crowd hushes. There's like, you know, some golf clapping and silence. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? I mean, I feel bad for his family and I'm bummed that they're about to spend their second Christmas without him. However, like it, it's the gig, like it's, you know, if you signed up for it, not knowing that this was part of the risk of the job, like, Hmm perhaps the the issue is like the training side mm. you know like like it, it's yeah so baffling to me the well, fourth largest like military the in the world of something that's tragic oh god it's so gross it's so to, gross to better yeah it's just not and couple it with a fact oh fuck couple it with a fact that the person involved are the children running around couple it with the fact that the uh the person involved in the shooting the citizen um was was this is this is the exact situation that we see in city after city across the U.S. where it was someone that was in a uh, a very charged emotional state and was and 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 didn't need to be confronted by force but needed someone to come and put an arm around them, you know, mm-hmm. and it, it's just like fuck. How do you people not see this? Like we're, oh. it's oh. really frustrating. It, it, yeah, yeah, and I and and that's like one of those things. Like where do you? where do you start to, to even like approach that conversation when people are clearly like, well, you know, the officer, geez, like what, I mean, it wasn't like it was a, it wasn't like the news articles were, were uh, splitting any words on it. You know, I mean, they were, it was, it was pretty gross how they described the victim and, you know, it's just like, ah, this is the world. Yeah. Well, Happy Thanksgiving on that note. Once again, <laughs> Gary manages to bring the episode to a uh, screeching halt. And um, well, <laughs> what I will say is this. Uh, I will say, I will, I will, I will um, slap a post-it note on this crack that I've put in here and say that um, 
I am thankful to have uh, this place where I can kind of speak like this, uh, you know, um, openly and not feel, uh, I feel like I can, I can share opinions and be wrong and, uh, and, and, and find out where I am. Um, and, uh, and to have this spot where I can sort of wrestle with the world around me with you all, uh, is, is so wonderful. Um, and I'm, I'm thankful for the, the greater community that, um, both of you are in and your opportunity to do the same in the way that you engage in it. So, uh, that's a, that's a cool thing to, to lean into as we hit this manufactured day of eating canned cranberries. <laughs> if anyone's interested in a non-canned cranberry version, I have a really good recipe. <laughs> I don't think anybody in my family is. I think they want to like pull it out, yeah. put it on the plate with the grooves in the side and slice it. I'm like, you know, it's a total preference. <laughs> Okay. But for me, I just love, to be honest, I love making it more than the eating it because it just makes the, like, it makes, it's one of the smells, right? That's like, um, <laughs> anyway, block this. Yes. <laughs> Uh, glaucus means two things, but they're both really excellent. Um, it's used to describe the pale blue or bluish green appearance of the surfaces of some plants as well as birds. Mm -hmm. Um, and it also means covered with a powdery bloom like that on grapes or plums. Oh, wow. That word is loaded with meaning. You say it like when you say that definition, like I can feel it, you know? That's cool. It's like a very particular color, um, but hmm. I like it. Do you, do you think, uh, obviously my first thought was space. Do you think that the view of space, that blue green color could be considered glaucous? Maybe at oh, certain maybe. altitudes? If you see a color of it though, it's almost more like blue purpley hmm. in their okay. examples. But it's hard to tell because on their examples of when they ex use examples for birds, it is that like light, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Light navy blue, dusty blue. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'll post links in Slack. <laughs> so we do have uh, a number of emails that were sent through the contact form. Some of them are legit. Uh, there's a few Allison questions, but I would like to, you know, and one of them is is my uh, biz jan biz jazz topic submission. Uh, oh. Uh, oh yeah, I need to get actually. On. I think before I before we read these, can we can we just do a quick like summary of um, uh, Ben Jazzconf for people that are still listening? Sure, Ben Jazzconf uh, or Gary, who's I, a I time recently recently days. updated the Ben Jazzconf uh, 2021 page on the website. Mm -hmm. uh, I did it, you know, last time I recorded, uh, and uh, basically what it says. Well, I can I can read it. In fact. Uh, it says, Bin Jazz Conf is a conference for us, the creators of Binary Jazz. It's the hypothetical introvert conf conference we've talked about many times in the show and privately. You're all invited, of course, and we'll stream it for you. But the only requirement is that we entertain ourselves and are possibly entertaining to others in the process. Uh, it is not a tech conference, at least not intentionally. It is a conference by and for people who are in technology, us, uh, but it is not about technology or specific technology. The plan is to start uh, at our normal recording time, uh, each speaker will present their topic. After the talks are done, we'll record a normal binary jazz episode. Uh, so total running time will be two-ish hours, depending on if we get guests. Um, and it will be on December 10th. And I think that is accurate now. Cool. Um, uh, that will be fun. I think that I uh, am realizing that Rhonda is leaving town that day. Uh, which is fine. It doesn't impact anything unless she's leaving town, like literally at that moment. Uh, so. And then uh, Gary suggested that in lieu of uh, like a registration fee, we uh, encourage you because you can watch it for free and live and whatever, or after the fact, uh, but in lieu of a registration fee, uh, you can make a donation to your favorite charity or nonprofit organization. And, and I put a list on the website. Uh, as well I would as... also add that if you're if you're struggling and you want to use a list on the website, great. If uh, if not, and you have somewhere like local, it's a favorite of yours. Yeah. Also, yeah. fantastic. Go go with what go with what you got. Go with what you want to do. But we have some suggestions, um, and some of them really really have serious need of of updating the website. But that's besides the point. Um, yeah. So I, I was looking at these uh, these messages that, that we have in our feedback bin. 
uh, and and noting that this is not this is not the stuff that's in the spam sections. This is stuff that filters through the spam because like there's a whole other range of things that are like in the spam. That's a whole other thing. Uh, so uh, one of them uh, one of them came in uh, on November fifth uh, from uh, according to the name on it, Doug Trail. Uh, has a nvi dot rambler rambler ram rambler dot com uh, email address uh, on a Russian uh, website because uh, it's not the same and uh, in Russian oh darn it I just lost it there we go in Russian uh, he writes to us I think you are making a mistake let's discuss this email at me email me at pm we will talk don't do not be upset more fun. Buy a card mechanic diploma, buy a low cost diploma, or buy a college diploma. Here. Actually, can you forward me that one? I would like a college <laughs> diploma. Low cost. Low cost. Uh, so that is oh, from really? Doug Trail. <laughs> but you're just buying the actual diploma. You're yeah. Not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. We have we have a contact from one. I'll put that on my resume too. Obtain diploma. <laughs> Twenty twenty one. We have a contact from uh, from one two three. Uh, they have a numeric email address that is at qq.com. They did not give us any content. That's actually That's pretty cool. common at QQ. QQ is uh, is numeric addresses. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, and then this one comes in English uh, from uh, an economymom.com. Uh, you uh, email address. It's from Sarah Bull, and she says, "Hello, many entrepreneurs." Oh, I know Sarah become roadblocked on the path to operating a business by red tape in quotations roadblock is also just like her too yep <laughs> uh, requirements of law both national and regional i'd enjoy writing an article for your website to guide entrepreneurs through the primary types of licensing and permitting required by their related business types uh, the article will be written in a simple, quick reference format to make the seeking of licensure as quick as possible. Please let sure. me know if I can write this for you. And thanks so much for your time, Sarah. Um, so somewhere along the way, uh, someone back in the 90s, maybe the early 2000s, was like, hey, if you like more traffic for your blog, offer uh, an article exchange. And this has been like yeah. a, a huge source of spam ever since. And yeah. whoever suggests, I would love to know who suggested this. I'm sure that they, they didn't mean anything nefarious by it. I'm sure that it was like, you know, with good intent, but I would love to ask them how they feel about it and, you know, what they think, because obviously it has turned into something pretty, pretty not great. Uh, we have another one that is, we'll get Chris to Allison's, like, I don't care. I, we'll get to Allison's, but uh but uh probably not all my week. valid questions i know because like i didn't want to like all your your questions are also like like some of them are are possibly like more thought-provoking and like since we are already kind of on a low note i didn't want to end i wanted to end on a stupid note so if i i was going with the stupid things and we can just clear this clear out our bin and then and then have a have a clean slate next time uh so this one is in partial russian and partial english uh from jackie wex uh, who also has a ram is that j-a-c-k-y or i-e i-e okay thank you uh, and this is a combination of english okay, and Jackie. russian it says in russian this is also unlikely this is unlikely is in russian and then the rest is in english it says has a robust monitor report comma link to a pinterest pin uh, having experienced a server seizure by authorities, which proved its zero log policy true on the time, learn our ExpressVPN. That's I don't need to copy that one, actually. <laughs> and the last one that I have. Can't wait to shop my diploma, is, though. Which is good because we have less than a minute. Let's see what this one says. Uh, great, very valuable message for which the best IP telephony is required. Oh, I love IP telephony. Oh, and that is just a uh, run through our inbox. Uh, just a reminder, you can send us your comment that is not in or Russian spam. and is actually legitimate nope. at uh, binaryjazz.us. It's a form on the website. You can also submit... Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at 
non-binary jazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.